направо към един път, това е ясно, това е гледно към централна, и гледно към един път. Yes, Lorraine Hanson, 11 Watson Lane. Uh, a, few, a couple weeks ago, I had brought up a question about um, inventorying the property, and I believe that Kim had said she was going to check with what other towns were doing, and I was going to ask if she'd done that or had a chance to any busy. So. I did. I did send out emails uh, to some of the other communities, and um, I have not gotten feedback yet. I did ask Caroline to put it on our agenda, our strategic planning um, list. Um, so it wouldn't fall off. Um, and I think we, I did get a little bit of input from our auditor on some of the reviews. It Thank is you. on our list. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Public input? Alright, so, sorry, no. Anybody on the line have community input? Alright, the approval minutes from August 19th. Yes. Can I make a motion to approve the minutes of August 9th? Yes, I'll second that. Alright. Alright, so the department has going to start with town clerk of Dr. Prince Station, please. Uh, sure. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Dan Colby, uh, town clerk. Uh, I live at 25 South Street. Um, so anyway, um, I just want to take a look. I'm not sure if you guys have copies of the proposed hey, budget. I read through it today, so I'm familiar with what you're looking for. It's going to go line by line. Okay. Sure. So to start with the town clerk stipend, um, I was kind of doing some number crunching and kind of figuring uh, I had written a letter to the select board members uh, giving them sort of a, a better idea of what a town clerk does um, on a daily basis. Um, I'll just give a very brief summary of what I wrote to them. Um, we're open, you know, as, as everybody knows, I call, many people know, some still don't know that we're open 20 hours a week to the public now, um, split them on four weekdays, uh, varying you know, time frames, um, and that's been going well. Um, you know, we have busy days, we have not so busy days. And, uh, you know, the, the access to the public has been really good. Um, you know, things are running smoothly as I can tell. Um, definitely compared to when I started, when we were closed, and you know, in, the, in the winter set, you know, time during the, um, the pandemic. Um, so I just kind of go through it and just give a sense of what I do. Um, it's a very interesting job. It's the first time I've ever been a town clerk. Um, and there's a lot to it. Um, I taught high school English for 16 years, and I know a little bit about uh, multitasking. Uh, it's a huge part of that job. Um, multitasking is a huge part of this job as well. Um, so I just kind of go through it and, and what, I, what I'm up to during the day when I'm here. Um, we are open 20 hours, but the job is definitely more than 20 hours. Um, uh, there's a there's time after I close where I uh, close to the public. I need to close out um, all of the transactions, mostly motor vehicle, most days. Um, that takes some time just to get the numbers right and uh, make sure everything looks good. Um, I do make two trips to the bank uh, every week, um, add some time to that. So. Um, you know, I would say on average I work about 25, you know, 24, 25, 26, around there, you know, per week. Um, the way the stipend is currently, that breaks down to just under $20 an hour. Um, I believe that, you know, with my experience, uh, work experience, my college education, um, that I'm worth more than, than that for the town. So. The, the stipend is reflective of a $22 an hour. Uh, and I know it's a stipend and we're not going by, I don't get paid hourly, uh, but I just use that as a way to understand the numbers. So basically that's what that number is. That's where I, that's where I got that number. So basically 22 times 25, um, and then times 52 weeks of the year, that's where I get that number. Um, so anyway, so, so that's that. Um, so, this year, uh, next year, 2022, uh, there are three elections. Uh, the town election in March. There's going to be a September um, state primary. And then there's going to be a November uh, general uh, election, state election in November. Um, so the town clerk 
election stipend has been $300 for a few years, um, and that would be 300 times three, the three elections. That's where that 900 comes from. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the ballot clerk, is very important, uh, as we all know, um, and that's 200 times um, times three. That's where you get to the 600. So the ballot clerk for three elections. Now the, the next line, payroll taxes, elections, um, that number, um, the one I have is, is different from what I think you have. Um, Caroline did some work with, with that um, and, and figured out the, the payroll taxes for, for me and then the ballot clerk. Um, so that's reflective of, those, of that. Um, programming printing of ballots. Um, I used a number that I got from um, 2019. Um, you know, it's, it's, and I, I spoke with uh, LHS, LHS Associates is the company that does our, that prints our ballots and does the programming of the, of the ballot machine. Um, and um, so next year we'll have uh, to create one ballot. And the cost of that is dependent on how many Warren articles we have. So if it's one page or two pages. Um, so that's kind of tough to, tough to know at this point. Um, so anyway, so that, that 3,500 includes uh, one, printing of one ballot and then three of these coding charges. Every time there's an election, there's a coding charge from LHS Associates. So um, I did some number crunching with what we what we are charged for this past non election, kind of, you know, and then add, added two more coding charges. And it actually came out to be a bit more than that 3,500, but we also printed more ballots for this past town election than we needed to because I've never done an election in my life and I wanted to have enough. <laughs> so we ended up printing more than we really needed. So I'm kind of backtracking out of it. So that's what that is. Um, $200 is a payment to the, to the minutes taker at the town meeting. So whoever that is, that takes the, uh, the, the minutes at that meeting, they get a $200 stipend. Uh, training is the same as it's been for as many years as is reflected on this spreadsheet, 100 and then mileage 50. Uh, same thing with the $1,000. That's essentially printer ink cartridges, which are fairly expensive. Um, and then DMV or renewal forms that go out to residents, um, you know, to, to then renew their um, renew their vehicles through mail or the Dropbox or many people still bring it in. Um, in my letter, I talked about we're in the process of, of going to online vehicle registrations. Um, and we're very, very close. I'm still waiting. Um, Interware development is the software that we went to, Clerkworks software, before before I came on board. There was a decision to move the motor vehicles to Clerkworks, um, which, which from my perspective is far superior to the, to the DMV map software we had been using when I first started. Um, in our bookkeeper Chuck, who is also works as my assistant, does some motor vehicle um, transactions himself, agrees with me that it is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a much, much better program, um, and it's a lot smoother um, for our daily operations. Um, so, so anyway, the, uh, the, we're going to an, an online registration, which is no extra cost to us. Um, it's part of the whole interware. We're already paying for it, basically. We just haven't taken advantage of it yet. And we're very close to going live, um, just waiting for them to work out some kinks uh, in, in, the, in the process. Um, I've been doing some research. There are about 31 or 32 towns that I've compiled that are all about the same size as Reynoldsburg population-wise, from 2,000 to 3,000 people. Um, and um, I'm almost finished going through, I've just been going to each one of these towns' websites, and an overwhelming majority of them already do online vehicle registrations. We're very well behind the eight ball with that. So I think that will be a really positive step forward um, for, for the townspeople. Um, not to say that, that you have to do it, it'll be another option. Um, but that's something we get from using interware development, and that's a pretty major jump on the line item is the town clerk info systems. That brings me to that. Um, and this is that 25, 27 you see there is what they charge for support. We've already paid for the software. 
this is their support, this is what they charge. And this is the number that I got recently. They actually gave us a, a kind of a, a pre-invoice, if you will, uh, forecasting what it will cost us this year, which was nice of them to do on budget, in, you know, in, in terms of budget. Um, so that's what we're getting, that's what that is. So obviously using Clerkworks and going through in yours is more expensive than, than that, okay? Um, I, I can tell you from my daily experience with it, it's, it's far superior, and it offers us an online component that Matt just doesn't offer. Um, so if we want to kind of get up to speed, you know, with the other towns in New Hampshire that are right around our size, offer more accessibility to our uh, residents, I think Interwar is really smart for us to, to stay with that. Um, backtracking one, um, lunches that would be lunches that we provide to volunteers um, at elections, we're having three elections. Um, it's actually, I bumped it down a little bit. This past town election, we, we, didn't, we didn't use as much as was, was budgeted, um, and I don't see us ever using as much as that was budgeted. Um, so anyways, I kind of knocked that back a little bit. And let's see, almost it. And then the next one, vital records and payments to the state, I just kind of stuck with what's been going on with that. I backtracked it a little bit. Um, and this is a variable. I mean, we, it's all dependent on how many people come in to get the vital records. Um, it's really hard. It's hard to track that. I mean, and you can see back, it's kind of bounced, you know, all over the place, really. Um, uh, gone over budget and under budget. You know, it's really hard to know. Um, you know. So anyway, so that's about it. All right. Good questions. Um, can you tell me about how um, if you could estimate how much time savings is aware will provide to you. How much time savings for me? Um, uh, that would be a tough thing to estimate. Um, uh, for, I, I mean, I can give you some uh, kind of anecdotal just from being on the job. Um, one, one advantage of it is the interface, you see everything right in front of you. Whereas the DMV map software, you don't, and you have to go page to page to page. So you fill in the information on one page, and it can kick you ahead to the next page. If you miss something on that other page, you have to just cancel everything out and start over again, which is a definite drain on time, you know, especially when you have a line of people here. Um, whereas the Interware Clerkworks program uh, is all right in front of you. It gives you an error message, directs you to, you know, what the problem is, and if you've used it enough, you. Kind of every every bit of software has its kinks. So um, now that I've used it for several months, you know I, I know what it's talking about. The language is is cryptic at first, but then then, then now that you've used it, you know what it's talking about. You go through it. For example, oftentimes a registration will go through because there's no 603 in the person's telephone number, and so the computer just freezes up. The program freezes up. So um, now that I know that, I know where to look. So kind of rambling here. Um, so that's a huge advantage I see for, for Interware the Clerkworks uh, program because everything is right in front of you and you can go and change things. You don't have to cancel and start from scratch. Will this allow for our residents to do renewals online? Yes. So that's the time savings I was looking for. That's a huge time, time okay. savings. Huge time savings, yes. Um, you know, just recently I, I talked with, with Chuck quite a bit, uh, as you would imagine, we're the only ones here sometimes, um, often, often. Um, and, you know, if say 12 people come in on a, a given day that we're open, we're, we're open for five hour stretches, um, eight of those people might be in for renewals, which they could do online once we get there, which, I, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks we can get there. And that will be dog licenses too, right? Dog, you could be dog licenses. Mm -hmm. um, you could you could apply for vital records. You can't get them online, but you can apply, at least apply for them. Also, you can do registration estimates. You know, tell because oftentimes I have people asking how much is that going to cost me. Um, if especially uh, a lot of younger folks don't write checks and they, they always want to pay cash, um, gives them an idea of what it's going to be. Um, so it, it, there's a lot of value there um, in, in time savings. Do you um, think that will allow you to get back to 20 hours? 
No, because I do have to um, close up and I do have to go to the bank. Uh, so it's always going to be over 20 hours. If we, if we remain open 20 hours a week. Um, I'm just saying, yes, we're open 20 hours, but you know that's, that's me here 20 hours. I'm always going to be over the 20 hours because of closing out. It can take me anywhere from 15 minutes to half an hour. Um, and then, of course, twice a week I'm going driving the summer's work to deposit. Um, you know, so it's just it's always going to be more than 20. Um, so are you, 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 you masked the software fairly well and Chuck has too? Oh, yes. Good. Oh, yes. Definitely. Definitely. I get a lot more practice than he does, but he's, he's, he's pretty good at it. Pretty proficient with it. it. Yeah, I mean, it... it yeah, it, I, I only used the map software for the first however many months I was here, you know, when we were trying to just navigate everything when we were closed. Um, and it, you can you can get, with the map software, I, I always found that you could get lost in it, you know, and, and you'd always just have to start, over, start from scratch. And that's, that's a, it, it's very frustrating and it's, it's a time drag. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Welcome. All right, so are we going to shelter time? I want to buy it. I don't want to sit here. They, I do anticipate they'll. They're here. They're in the hallway. Right here. Eliza? Mm hmm. Mark, you're out. Fire? Hello, good evening. So uh, obviously quite an eye chart here. This is uh, all of our line items that we have. Uh, there's roughly eight line items that we've uh, requested an increase in. And we'll go through each one of those individually, just so you understand. Uh, there is around a six and a half, seven percent increase. Uh, most of that is related to salary. So kind of jump into to that. So the first line item increasing from fifteen to eighteen thousand is the chief salary. Um, with the additional responsibilities of EMD, York Ambulance Liaison, uh, the, the administrative time related to required paperwork for NFPA compliance, an increase in call volume that we've seen, um, and the fact that the fire department has missed the last two pound raises or increases of 1%, um, all added up to us recommending an increase in that line item. Because basically the fire chief position primarily was obviously running the fire department. And I've had two new added responsibilities, which is requiring a fair amount of time. The EMD issue, 
Uh, of course, was previously taken place by the police chief. Uh, it's now fallen into my lap, so I have to constantly update uh, the town plan uh, related with the state to the plan that they require us to submit. And then also with the ambulance, that contract for the years that we've had it, there was really nobody watching and seeing what was going on. We've changed uh, the last contract to add some uh, checkpoints in it so that we can take care of that. And basically that's something else that's fallen into my lap to take care of this uh, on the medical side of stuff. So that's why uh, those two things have been in there. And as Sean said, um, for the last two plus years, there hasn't been any increase in anything within the fire department as far as uh, compensation goes. And my workload has increased times three. Questions? Uh, well, I do have a question because I was looking back at the budget, and it, in 2019, um, your salary line doubled from 70, about 7,500 to 15,000. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. You know why? It just didn't double for just the sake of doubling. It went because for the first few years, I was in the the regular salary line of firefighter. So as we went on calls, I was not only compensated the stipend which I got, I was also paid for call. I was removed from that system, no longer paid for call, so that the firefighters would have more compensation on their end. And when you added up what I was doing on calls with the stipend, they probably equaled that number of 15. So basically it just all washed out and it took me out of the picture and gave more compensation to the firefighters. And it also, it also being appointed, it also probably created a situation where you would be staying in the position where someone could actually run and replace you that had no experience. Well, yeah, we changed that from being an elected to the appointed side yeah. of things. So yeah, we had a lot of discussions about that. Yeah. So it was kind of one kind of, of the half step type thing. Right. More for that, but the other situation could have been so it might not have been the best situation. Correct. So similar to what we talked about with the chief's line, uh, increasing the member salary line from 56,000 to 60, uh, we have seen a tremendous amount of call volume increase. We are already at, in August, the number of calls we made in the entire prior year. So eight months in, we've done you know, equal to a whole year's worth of calls. How many calls is that? 164-ish, uh, uh, off the top of my head. Whereas last year for a whole year, we did 182. So three quarters of the year, we're right where we would have been for a whole year. So we still got a quarter to go. We're in the time coming around, and typically that end of the year, I call tend to increase. We dodged a big bullet over the weekend because the storm didn't come. So well, we probably would have landed well, or ran 30 or 40 calls of weather in these issues. We got lucky it didn't come this far. You got, got 3,000 for the chief, and then 1,000 for. Four thousand for the for the individual salary. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, three thousand, seven thousand. Am I okay? Yep, got it. Um, you know, currently, for the last two quarters, we were looking at an hourly wage for the page for the firefighters. We're paying about seven dollars and fifteen cents an hour for their time. How many firefighters are covered in that salary line? So, no, a number. No, well, roughly there's twenty-four, but it doesn't go out equally. Right, and so for a long time I've asked for um, a breakdown of how that he is. He wants to break down, I'll hand it to you. We've got every quarter broken every down week. in the last year. You can look at every single one. Well, we want to see how how the point system works. We want to understand how that they're compensated. Yeah. So, so we provided that for you last year. Oh, okay. All of that um, can, information. You, can you provide that yeah. to you, Dylan? I know right, I'd have to look for it. I, I think we, it it's all in. So it comes in the payroll every time you submit payroll every quarter. It's all right there. Well, all I understand it. the system. Well, um, yeah, so probably, we'll probably have to have a conversation about right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you will, you can come and make an appointment. We'll sit down and explain it to you. Actually, if you could put documented, that would probably be better. It is documented. Okay. In that office right now. All right. Yeah. Send it well, over. Just because I put it in front of you doesn't mean you're going to understand it. Well, I'd like to take a look at it first, and then I can ask questions. Yeah, and, and that was all, like I said, we put that all together. Right. The fire right. And then just uh, a quick question, so the $4,000 raise, do you guys have an estimate of what it would go from? Is that $7.50 now, or is it a different wage? 
And that's that's the hard part with the whole thing. So we don't know how many calls we go on. Stuff. And we've been shooting trying to get the minimum wage for years. Okay. And you've got to understand, the last two years, um, when I built the budget, I never built in an increase because I was told, we're not sure what we're going to do, and I needed to submit the budget by a certain date. Um, I asked if we were going to get the bump when everybody else did, but it never came back around to the fire department. So for two years, every member of the fire department, while everybody else on that's employed in the community, got some sort of stipend or pay increase. The fire department hasn't seen one for over two years. So not only is that 1% built in from two years ago and then last year, that's kind of built into this and whatever may happen this year. Whereas before, like I said, shame on me, I didn't build it in because there was no real direction on where I should go with that. So this year we decided we're going to make up for the two and then add a little bit more to catch up. So in 2020, um, that line was increased by 10,000, that's correct? In 2020? In 2020. Okay. You're looking at it, that must be yep. correct. Okay. And again, that was, we had long, long discussions to try to get the minimum wage. Because I think before that even happened, we were up to the pay this by $6 an hour. The $10,000 in 2020, I think, had to do with it got cut in the budget, but then the select board allocated it anyway because yes. it was the fire proposed. Uh, but then the budget committee cut it, back. or at some point it got cut, and the select board did it anyway. Mm -hmm. So basically, it took it out and went back in, so that's what you're looking at. It's not like we increased well, the budget. Oh, they did, right, because they appropriated, um, it was 46, but then they spent in 19, they spent 52. And then it was increased by 10,000 in 2020. Yes, right, they did overspend it. In, in 2019. I, I wasn't speaking to oh, overspending, I was okay. just speaking to the $10,000 yeah. in 2020. Overspend, were you just saying we overspent the salary line? Yeah. No, um, we didn't. So it, so we've never overspent the salary. Right? And I'm telling you what the, the document says that Carolyn did. In 2019, it was allocated at $46,000, and expenditures was $52,073. Unless this is wrong. I can't speak to that off the top of my head. Yeah, no, that's I how the numbers came in. Where that came we've not, we have that salary line, we break it into quarters, and we submit it based on that. So whatever the numbers are saying on there, I dispute that too because we've never gone over our salary. Okay. Well, we can speak with the tour. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, Chief's expense account, um, so 275 to 500, a relatively small increase. This is used for long duration events. Um, if we get a storm where we have a bunch of calls and members are required to stay at the station for a long amount of time, pizza, fuel, things like that that are brought in because we're all required to be there for a long time. Or if we have other departments come to the station for what we call station coverage, if they're there during meal time, they're away from their station. So we have to provide some kind of food to them to eat because it's you know, an unplanned event. That's what I like. That has nothing to do with anything that I use it for. It's for the words, for the members, and for the communities that come to support us. And we found that over the last year or so, that 275 was nowhere near adequate because we've been uh, having a lot more long duration events. And by long duration, I'm talking anywhere from three to six to eight hours that guys are in the firehouse. And we just got to take care of them. So that's, that's what we use this line for. So combine a couple here just to try to expedite the process here. Firefighter gear and equipment line. Uh, relatively small increases of $500 in each of those two lines. Um, FDA 1851 requires gear to be replaced every 10 years. Uh, we currently have 14 sets of gear that are past the 10 year window. Um, and we have another 19 set of gear upstairs that is also expired. So you know we have a large amount of gear that's expired creates a huge liability for the town. Um, part of this will be addressed 
with the Warren article. Um, hope that hopefully passes, but we also need to keep in mind that those 24 members, every 10 years, those members need to be up. So what happens to the 19 cents that expire? We use it for extra gear, so if they use a regular set of gear, they come back to the instruction fire and it's filthy and it needs to be defound and washed and whatnot, so we can still keep those guys in service, we will use that gear for let them still be able to cross perform on this so kind of backup. Kind of a backup. Second set of gear. The only thing we have to be careful of is because it's out of date, we have to be very careful on what their assignment is. Because if anything happened where these guys were in a building and there was an accident or an incident, and uh, there was an led to some sort of investigation. They gather up every piece of equipment that's been involved and if they were in expired gear, huge, huge fines are gonna be coming back behind that. So some of this is also the fact that the last two years the manufacturer of this gear and equipment didn't do it. They switched over and did stuff related to COVID, making masks, making suits, making whatever they needed to do. So our normal pattern of replacement has been disrupted. And also delivery time for this tournament is all backed up for any fire department wanting. So we're trying to keep up and jumpstart a little bit of that because we're falling behind the eight ball and getting up all the guys that here they need. And some of it relates to training. Training is tightened up an awful lot. When guys go to training, they inspect your gear and make sure everything is in compliance and within date. Or they can't go to the training for that we try to get them to you know become a firefighter. So that's become an issue that we've got to make sure they have very good stuff. It's tightened up over the past year, so that's become an issue also. And then it cost a year, uh, like it says, $3,700, and that's on the low end of things. Um, we could, that's just what you see there. That's not counting, you know, gloves, hoods. There's still other components that we uh, use some other funding for. Questions? No, not for me. Okay. Um, so the next two line items are our hose and emergency equipment testing. Um, last year, um, at the recommendation of the budget committee, our hose line was decreased from 3,000 to 2,000. Um, we're recommending that we're back to 3,000. We have already overspent that line because we have Hose that needs to be replaced every year. We you know, go out on fires and you know, people run it over, and it, it's you know, it, it just it has a life cycle, and we need to replace a certain amount of it. Um, the second one, the emergency equipment testing. Um, again, it's required by NFPA that we test the flow of the Scott Air Pack airflow through the Scott Air Pack every year. We test the breathing air that goes into these packs every year. Um, so with that testing, we would increase that. You know, that. Those costs have increased and we've uh, increased the line. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff is, is mandated by the NFPA. And uh, we installed a new uh, air filling station. And that is the uh, F, F Code of Federal Regulations uh, through that. That we have to have it air tested quarterly and then the machine serviced and tested annually. So to have that done, it's approximately $1,200 that we have to build into the budget because it has to be done. And again, if we didn't do it, then it's uh, fines up and down. So we built that into uh, the budget. That's where that increase comes from. It's not stuff that we wanted to put, stuff that we have to do. Questions? Um, a um, couple other just miscellaneous things. Uh, there's currently a thousand dollar line for community mutual aid. Uh, that's no longer in the budget. You'll see that zeroed out. That group is in the process of disbanding. Why is that? And what does that mean to us? So most of the functionality of it has been taken over by Seacoast Chiefs, which we're also members of. Um, that group is a long-standing group and was originally founded around the river, Samuel Paul River, and a dive team. Um, and ten communities locally that kind of touch our borders for the ones that initiated the mutual aid group. And over time, the larger communities such as Rochester and Dover and Durham did not utilize any more of that need. And a lot of these other departments, when that started, they were still all departments. They've gone permanent departments now, career individuals. 
So some of the stuff that that had available, they did not need anymore. So the dues that we were paying and that was going into that was just they they had no reason to have to pay it because they'd already recouped it on the other end because they had their own equipment. So rather than keep just four or five communities which um, had the most benefit from it, we had some meetings last year and it was voted that it just kind of slide away. Some of the assets that were in there that were the most important ones were the air van that, that some of the fire department used to run. The air van with their new construction of the station went away. It's now in Lee. Lee operates that piece of equipment. And then their air, air filling station in Cascade was going to be shut down during their new construction, so they didn't need that anymore. So, as John said, we are now part of Seacoast Chiefs uh, Mutual Aid District, which went from 10 fire departments to 37. And so with that, we have tenfold in the amount of resources available for us. Is there a cost for that? Yeah, so it's, it, this was a thousand dollars. So we went from having 10 communities paying a thousand dollars off with the mutual aid insurance. We went to Seacoast Chiefs and we paid three hundred and sixty dollars a year for ten times the, the equipment and the availability of what we need. So we're keeping that service, just moving it to a Just kind of moving it around. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so when I submitted the budget to you guys, I made an error on the Scott Air Pack line. Uh, last year it was three thousand dollars. It should be three thousand. Um, that was just a typo on my part, so uh, I did update it, and I will send you guys an updated copy. Um, the last thing that we able to ask is right now vehicle repair. Um, we'd like to see that upgraded to vehicle apparatus maintenance and repair. Um, that's truly what it's used for. So if we need maintenance on a pump or things like that, it's all included. We're just more accurate when we reflect how we're spending that one. Uh, just a you know a paperwork thing, but mm -hmm. uh, so that we're accurately reflecting how we're spending the money. The other thing with the budget overall, since so this is part of our last slide, right? yep. is for the last two years, I know when COVID was hit, we were asked, and all the partners in the community were asked to level fund. That's correct. And for two years in a row, we did level fund. Last year, at the 99th minute. Um, they went in and cut another two thousand or three thousand dollars out of the budget, whatever it was. So we were actually cut last year. So we're just trying to recoup a lot of what we've lost over the last two years. Is what this budget is about. Downstairs in the basement is making a clicking sound and showing zero um, on the input voltage DC. Um, so it sounds like batteries, which fortunately it was. Um, however, when the company that came in to service them saw the panel, they said, just so you know, that panel is no longer serviceable. And Subsequently, they found that all the heat detectors upstairs have all been recalled and are no longer serviceable. Which means that the fire alarm system here in the town hall is basically not working properly, uh, which creates a huge liability for the town. Um, anytime, like tonight, there's a public meeting, there could be an incident that happens upstairs, a lightning strike, whatever. Those detectors may or may not work. The fire alarm panel downstairs may or may not mm -hmm. actually function appropriately. Um, I've talked to two different companies, and um, of them, one has gotten back with, to a quote with me. Um, at the same time, based on the one article that we had in the fire station, I was already working with companies to get quotes on the fire alarm system for, for the fire 
conversation. So I know companies, I know the pricing, all of that. Um, the company that did reply burns is also the cheapest that will apply for the fire station as well. Okay. So obviously up to you guys, but my recommendation is, is given the fact that we're running a really questionable system, we move forward with a purchase for the firms. Right. The dollar amount is twenty one thousand one hundred and thirteen dollars. So have we confirmed that the system can't be repaired? So the system, the parts in the system are no longer available and it's no longer serviceable. They did replace the, um, the batteries were from 2003. The panel is much older than that. Um, it is what I was told, but I don't have an exact date. But you figure the batteries were 18 years old with a five-ish year expectancy. So, um, is it possible you could give us two written proposals within the week? So if the other company that I have decides to to quote it, I will gladly turn that over. That'd be great. Um, they were supposed to have it to me today. Okay. I've contacted them three times and I'm not even going to come back. Okay. So. Who is that? Um, it was the company that I originally put it in, and I apologize. I could go downstairs and look real quick. No, uh, I, I can't remember. Yeah, we're we'll we'll not going to make a decision. Email the information. Yeah, Mark is the, the sales guy that I dealt with, and like yeah. I um, said, I have contacted them multiple times. And, and so because we're, we're also looking at you know, security system. I don't know if it could be, at this point, combined for a cheaper. Quote if it's possible by the burn security, I don't know. So, so Burns did provide a quote for the access and video system for the town hall um, place, and they also provided a quote for the system at the fire station. Um, what he told me is that if you were to do both fire systems, that he would further reduce his quote by a thousand dollars. Right. For us to have both of them together. The 21-113 he said is a not to exceed number. There are several areas that he thinks he would come in lower on, but given it's an old building, employing Myers, he needed to kind of cover himself. Um, you know, the other company came out Friday. He came out Monday and had a little bit of The only way I look at it right now is if we have to put up units in one bucket, so to speak, I'd rather put it in five, fit in the fire, the fire system that's broken, and the security system that could be populated. Two different pots of money. Yep. So, so to do the fire system will come out of operating budget, whereas the phone system security system was a word article. That's capital funds. So, to do one does not interfere okay. with the other. Um, Sean, could you speak to? I think Paul was asking about how the security system, like, the, like how they talk to each other, to like, like about them being the same technology or not the same technology. Yeah, if it's possible. So, so Burns is able to do both is the, the short of the, the story. The current system is not the recommended solution going forward. So today, the fire alarm system goes through the alarm system. Yep. The problem with that is, is that if a smoke detector goes off or a heat detector goes off, a fire or a sprinkler head goes, we lose all of that information. All we know is that something happened with the fire alarm system that goes to the alarm system. Okay. Not recommended code. You look at over some of those, all of those systems are required to notify separately. So that if one happens, something happens at the same time, there's two different alarm notifications going on. Uh, okay. So there is a, a monthly fee or a quarterly fee associated with a new alarm system that's built into that. So uh, the, the, the 21,113 is just the alarm system, not and plus the security system was, did Bur Burns never gave us a quote on security? So, I, I have, so now we have one. <laughs> I do have a quote. Um, so it is significantly more than the original quote. 
Um, but there's also, I would say, more options in this quote than the original quote. The other thing that, that we would need to check with on the other company is, with the firm's cameras and system, their cameras are US verified versus a lot of the other companies use cameras out of China, mm -hmm. which cannot be used in any you know, federal grants, mm -hmm. any federal departments, mm -hmm. and they're automatically disallowed. Um, they're cheaper cameras, mm -hmm. but yeah. there's security risks with those cheaper cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and then where we're looking at the station, all probably not the area that we want to risk. So their proposal, um, and again, um, it included you know, card access to all of the offices on this floor, more cameras, um, was around 59,000. Um, of that, I would say probably 20,000 is things that are not in that other quote. Do we need to have everything in the proposal? Are there options? So there are options. Um, right now we have key, uh, card key access to three doors up here. That included going to card key access for all of the doors up here. So there was routine so that if somebody goes into Chuck's office or Caroline's office, you actually have a signature of this person entered at this time. Right now, it's a key. You have no way of knowing who actually went into that office at any given time. What was the um, word article for the amount? $60,000. To include a phone system. This has no phone system. Right. Um, Sean, do you think you could send us these proposals before the next meeting for Monday? Yes. Okay. So are you guys meeting again Monday? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I have the Burns proposals already. Yeah. I just don't have the... Uh, is, it, is it Accutel? Is I think that was, well, that was the security. That, that's that phone. Security. That's, that's phone, and I don't know if they also do they security. security. Yeah, Accutel. Accutel. Yes. Okay. But, um, and so, if you could maybe find out who the other model alarm system was too. Thank you. Yep, they're out of hand. Can I just stop talking about that? No, that's fine. Um, okay, we'll have it here also. Okay, um, first one that I have here is for uh, a few little bit of background on it. We, uh, we know that one of our line items is for upgrading our radio equipment. We needed to start with two years ago. It was kind of old. Uh, the major part of the last year was because we had the pump failure in the tank truck, so we had to do that. So the funding that was put into this long-term uh, solution to our radios was removed to cover that expense. Uh, so this year we've gotten back into our, our plan to where we work on our radio upgrades. And we want to uh, upgrade the uh, radio that's in the tank truck now, and we need some more portable radios. So we've made the, the contact with Motorola, They've uh, met up with, uh, with what our needs were, so we want again, like I said, replace the mobile, the mobile radio, the tank truck, and then we'll get two hand, two handheld, all band portable radio, and then the installation of that stuff into the tank truck would go through uh, two way to do the work. Motorola Systems is supplying us with the equipment, and the total for that is sixteen thousand nine hundred seventy dollars and fifty five cents. That comes from our radio equipment line, and it also comes from the radio repair line, because the equipment line is, uh, is $15,000, and obviously we need a little bit more, so we're taking out of the radio repair line. Both of those lines are, uh, have the funding in it to uh, handle this request to, to the radio. What will happen also with the head that's in the uh, tank now, it's gonna, we're going to keep that, and uh, down the road we're going to add it to the command vehicle, so uh, we'll double the radio capacity within that vehicle, which is something that's needed on a large incident. So uh, we're actually going to get three, three, four radios because we're the only one. So that's uh, port source number 2013, the Motorola solution. 
There's also uh, an invoice in there for the first set of radios that came in. I don't have the other one in my hands yet, but they've been sent. So the information in there for the overall price is in there. I make a motion um, to accept PO 2013 for $16,970. I'll second that. Any discussion? No? Okay. I know we talked about radios in the past. I know that because that was when I first came on. We talked about it. Yeah. So as long as you come and buy down and you're doing company. Yeah. Much. Like I said, Paul, this is a spin-off from what yep. we were trying to do over a three-year period. We got we got the door slammed shut the last two years. So it's heading up. Well, it's in your in your line items. So. What's that? It's in the line items. So. Where's it? Is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where's it? Is? All right. And you have two of them? Oh, I've got a couple more. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you guys were meeting next week. I probably would have got a vote. Oh, okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the next one I have is because we've been having serious issues with the entrance doors to the fire station. John still sitting back there? I'm right here. Yeah, you probably know some of those that have been going on. I don't even where, tell you what the code is anymore. <laughs> yeah, but to the point where your offices have tried to close the one that's swinging wide open. and uh, The one on the driveway, uh, the paved side of the building, not the uh, hockey side, but the other side, the internal guts are starting to fail to the point where the door will not always lock. We've had some guys in there repair it. Sean is handy at that stuff. He's tried to repair it, and it's getting to the point where it's almost beyond being able to do that with uh, what our abilities are. So, I mean, I even had a call the other day from uh, somebody driving by. It was one of you guys, or somebody. Was it you that called me? Somebody called me. To go to the side of the fire station, swing wide open in the middle of it. So, who knows what's going on in there. So, with that being said, um, the door on the other side, we had the same issues, and uh, we worked through some of those. But we've had a uh, locksmith come in, and he has gone through all these parts and pieces and told us what's wrong. And we've got an estimate here. Take that to retrofit the entry doors, and a lot of it is to make it ADA compliant also, because these doors have no crash bars in them, or uh, uh, people that need a wheelchair or handicapped or trying to get out of the building, they don't have any of that. And we also want to make the fire code compliant because at this point they're not. Okay. So, um, as we've said before, the building can be used as a shelter should we have a large emergency. So those are two main ways in and out of that building. So we want to make these doors up to code. And when we also do that, we're going to be able to, when we get to the next thing, with the uh, fire alarm system, upgrading the doors is going to help us with our new entry. Some of what you've got to put in here in the town hall, you're going to put that same kind of system in the fire station. And this will help us take care of that. Get the doors ready to accept that. Okay. Okay. So as I said, all that stuff's going to be done. Uh, the estimate is here. It's uh, DO number two zero one four to Roach Locksmith Services out of York. A uh, total of thirty three sixty eight. And as I said, the main thing with this is the doors will have panic hardware on it. It doesn't have. We all understand what that is, right? Panic hardware. I don't. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the current doors right now middle bar. look similar to that, only they're not commercial, they're Home Depot door openers. Okay. If you were to go up to the front door and walk out where the construction is right now, you just push on it yep. and it opens. That's what code requirement is. It says single action will open the door. Turning mm -hmm. and pushing is dual action. It doesn't mean code. So this would cost you. Yeah. The big metal bar that runs across the room. That's what we're going to have installed in the For multiple reasons, as I see. Um, that will come out of the building maintenance line. And I know there's money in the building maintenance line. It's $9,500. I accept that for um, came in. What else are you anticipating for the fire station this year? Uh, we've got a few things in mind, but I can tell you exactly what I want to do. I'm excited. We have, uh, we'd like to do some insulating up in the attic space now that we've got all the heater stuff in place. We're starting to have some major issues with the bathrooms. And a lot of what I'm looking at and what we're thinking of upgrading is the fact that I'm going to keep pushing that as that building is, is can be used as part of the main building to use if we ever need to have a shelter in our community. And uh, the bathrooms are in the male, the men's bathroom is in sorry shape. 
So I'm thinking of allocating some funds for those kind of things so we can make that building much more user friendly because in certain areas it's not right. Okay. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve the funds for $3,368. I'll second that. Last but not least, we'll tackle a little more burn security. Um, by our warrant, our warrant article that we had passed in the spring was to install a fire alarm system within the fire station. Warrant article was uh, $25,000. Um, again, Sean, with his expertise, is a major player in all of this. Um, we didn't even show him that little thing, but he has that slide in there for the three um, quotes that we've received for our installation of the fire alarm system, burn security, one out of summer's worth, and I don't remember what the other one was. Super security. Super security. Out of summer's worth. And if you look at the numbers for what they're going to charge for installation, they're all very similar in what the bottom price would be. So if you compare apples to apples and look at the actual components that they install in the fire station, there's a huge difference. Um, one of them, like I said, it was like six different detectors for that price, and we were going to get 25 from Burns for the same money. So by looking at every component on their list of what they were going to install and comparing all three, Burns by far exceeded all of them. So we at the fire station want to use Burns to install our system. Uh, and what we've done, that's the fire alarm system. You know, install the monitoring put in the uh, uh, panel, all those kind of things. But when it comes to, uh, and we have that number, but under that 25, we can also put in an access system with a card, similar to what Sean talked about, that could be installed here in town hall, but that in the fire station. So that member's coming into the fire station, whatever the key, they slide it in. You've been able to have that information so we know who's coming and going, when they went, and all that information. And the other thing that we can install for this is surveillance camera inside and outside the fire station. So uh, the way we've broken this down is uh, I have two POs. Uh, the first one is 2015, which is going to go to burn security for the installation of just the fire alarm system. The 13714. What's the award article approved for? 25. Okay. The remaining $11,286 um, under PO number 2016. I'm going to make it up to Sean Williams because he is going to install mm -hmm. the cameras in the entrance. He has the expertise, he has the ability to get the parts and the pieces. And we're going to uh, pay him out of that section to, for his labor for installing the system. We couldn't do that under the other ones. The uh, price would have been exorbitant over what the warrant article was. So putting these two pieces together, his ability of what he does, we can get everything put in the station and we can get monitoring inside and outside all around the building with our access. Do you have a business show? So I, I work for a company doing IT. Uh, this would be just doing it. It's not. Uh, it's not my business. It would be just doing it because it's the fire station. And, uh, I'm a member there. Um, back, if you remember the beginning of COVID, fire department had awful access. We couldn't join Zoom. We just were dropping out. Town decided to buy a ubiquity network for the fire station which gave us wireless access in the station, it gave us a firewall, all of those things. Part of what I explained when we did that is, is that the future allowed us to have access control, allowed us to have cameras as part of that system, allows us to have a telephone system if we so choose to down the road. So that's just adding the components that are managed by the existing system that's in the fire station. So if you look at some of the other proposals, they want to have access control that's based on the web. It doesn't work for a fire station. You can't have an access control system that requires internet access when you're going in because if the internet's 
town, you still need to go and get the fire station. So we're the equipment that the town's already bought. You can house that in house in the server that we already have a fire station at a much less lower cost than what we put together three systems over the time. So I'm okay with it except for one sort of concern is I'm sure the equipment would be capable, but I guess how I said is if you guys had a contract with equipment, you know, you or Mark would be overseeing the work, so you're overseeing basically your own work. Right. Yeah, I do have some concerns. Um, I mean, I think we need to have a written proposal. Just our due diligence, a written proposal, and probably a comparable. Um, so I have all of that. If okay. you want to see the presentation, I'm quite glad to show you that. And so I mean, I'm short for this work. So my recommendation to save the town for the money would be to pay me as if you were buying a retail rate, which would, you know, if you look at the proposal for Burns, the proposal for Seco Security, they're talking $3,000 for their installation. It's probably about 24 hours worth of time for you to install all the network runs, to do the system, all of that. $45 an hour, that's $1,000. Significant saving for the town. Yeah, but I, I still I feel like I don't think you should be doing it for free. Yeah, okay. I'm not. And that's the, the detail rate of forty five dollars an hour. Is not be doing it for free. I mean, I think we're okay with that. I just like I need to see. Yep. Just so, so it's like. I, I think, in all fairness, you know, um, to be sure that we are being unbiased, that we need to see a comparable proposal. Yep. Um, I am concerned, but so um, do you warranty the work? Um, how do we know um, that um, you know it's guaranteed work? Um, those are the things that come with a like, company. Yep. And the, the warranty is 90 days for the uh, if you were to have burns or seagulls do it. That's it. Huh? So you know, doesn't really buy the town. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you stepping out of the I think we're okay with it, but it's just great to see. Yeah, so let me write that just one second. Alright, so we already talked about the fire alarm components. That's where I had mentioned where all the components are pretty much the same. Like came like there, you can see there's three different bids that we have. And if you look at the, the heat detector end of it on the burns, you're going to get 30 of them, whereas halfway can get 10. And there's other ones in there like CO detectors. You see nothing on the burns, nothing on the seacoats. Hackworth will give us six. But we don't need those because every time we start a fire truck, it's going to go off because we have no way of exhausting the fumes with them. So there's some adjustments in there where you can see, as I said, comparing apples to apples, there's a lot of differences. And that's why we were going to go with burns for our panels. But that's the same thing Sean has got one with the other ones, too. You want me to wait for him? Sure. Okay. I can understand your concerns, Kim, about you know, warranty and somebody putting in doing the work. And the system that's in the fire station now, Sean put in on his own time and all the expense, how we do anything to compensate him. He's been in that firehouse now for over a year. Zero problems, zero issues. They're completely uh, eliminated issues we would have with internet and, and all that stuff in there. That's what he does. He knows what he's doing. So I'm more than confident. I would not have him do the work for a town building that I'm responsible for unless I felt it could be done as good as anybody else that we want to contract with. The other thing is if I walk out and get hit by a bus, the IT consultant for the town currently uses just installed the community in the Office. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Well, on the flip side, if you get hit by a bus, we have no guarantee of what you've done. You know, which you might have with a company. I know. Um, yep. Sean has done a lot of research for us for a lot of things in the town, too, which we appreciate. So, so it, you know, this is Burns' proposal. You'll see that um, their access control is almost 7,000. Uh, cameras were a little over 14,000. Um, Hackworth 
again, the, this is almost a non-starter. You see the Z-Wave connector there, the second line of the down here, um, access control. That connects up to the internet and everything is managed through the internet. If the alarm.com hub is not accessible, you have no way other than a key to get into the building. We're trying to get away from having 30 keys for all of our members. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the cameras are low end cameras that you can buy off the Best Buy shelf and again go up through that alarm.com hub. Um, Seacoast, similar, you know, almost $10,000 between the two. Um, and then, yeah, if we self install them, the access control system is roughly $2,500. That includes the Ethernet access cables, that includes the two hubs, the alarm system for if the door gets left open, um, the striker, the push to exit, all of that. Um, and then the camera system would be roughly $4,500, six 4 to 12 megapixel cameras. Um, they would cover both entry doors, uh, the apron of the station, as well as the rear of the building. 32 terabytes of storage, which would give us closer to 60 days of storage, um, depending on what, how high of a quality we want to keep the video at. Um, and then I, I would estimate 24 hours to complete the floor. If you add those numbers up, it, it's much less than the dollar a month that, that Mark's proposing. But he, he wanted to include a buffer in there in case of the unforeseen which is you know, the same thing that would happen on Seacoast if you leave their contract. They run into you know, things that they don't know about the building, they need to add another switch, all of those things are additional costs that are not covered in their proposal. Right. Okay. I feel like I need some time to review all this information, the proposal, everything that you provided us. Can you send it to us so we can review it between now and the next meeting? Absolutely. Okay. What about those bills? And then we'll all on the bills. We'll clearly let you guys analyze it. Okay. We'll come back. You want to come back Monday? You got to have time to do it by then? Yeah. Or do you want to? Um, um, we can put it on the agenda if we don't get yeah. to it. You know, okay. Take it. But um, so, so as also, you could provide, if you weren't doing the work, mm -hmm. um, if you could provide an estimate of a company that would. So, you know, we have, um, we've done our homework. You know, yep. we know that, um, and again, my concerns is, you know, having an individual person um, who isn't insured, who gets hit by the bus tomorrow, um, I'm concerned about the guarantee of it. Mm -hmm. so, but please send us the information. And uh, I appreciate you doing the work, mm -hmm. and um, it's not, it's nothing about trust and integrity. It's just, that's kind of crazy. Oh, no, I can understand your side of it. It's crazy. And like I said, I, I wouldn't say they're proposals. No, I, I think I, it was the best deal for the community. Sean has done a lot for us. Uh, we've done a lot of the boiler system. So we have a lot of work. So we have a lot of work. Well, so here's a, a, a similar situation where you volunteer to help fix the gazebo. Yeah, that would be and um, you know, kind of question whether that was really the approach we yeah. wanted to take. Um, same concerns. Um, that's all. Yeah. Okay. I think the difference is, is that if I'm a town employee, mm -hmm. yeah, it's that is a difference. no different than asking George to take care of the maintenance of sure. the building, asking yeah. for me to do things in the fire station today. The cost that you would be paying is, I'm not saying, hey, I'm going to sell you this year and mark it up. Mm -hmm. it will be, here's the receipt for this, and you know, I have a separate you know, Excel spreadsheet that shows the detailed mm -hmm. cost breakdown. So if I go out and buy mm -hmm. a thousand gig Cat 6 cable, mm -hmm. that's $139 at one people, that's what the town will pay. Okay. So that's, that's the savings to the town would that become comes to us. Okay. And, and I understand that, but you know, it's no different than they said having any other town kind of employee doing the work for the town. Um, okay. Maybe that's a thought. 
Thank you. Okay, the only that I have is say this until Monday night. Thank you. We'll and so you're going to send us all this information, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 whether you have me do the access control stuff or not, it still makes sense to move with the fire alarm system. That we, I'd like to see all that information, that comparable information as well. Yep. Thank you. The thing with the town's fire alarm system for this building is something that you people need to put at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. You can't leave this building unprotected. Right. If you're going to you're gonna continue to continue to have business and whatnot in here, and the building is not protected by the fire alarm panel, then you're going to have to seriously decide whether or not you want to put detail work in here at 45 bucks an hour. And I'm saying this as a fire chief to make sure that community itself is protected and we need all the codes we're supposed to do. Because okay. right now it may still be limping along, but the thing is done. And unfortunately, it's typical like a lot of things we've done in this town. We wait till the very last minute till it craps out, and then we have to react this way to fix them. So this is something we got to get done right now. So if we come back and we can lump all this stuff together and make a, make a decision on Monday, or this will probably be the best thing for the community to do as a whole. In the meantime, we have the detector. The building is not one of the <laughs> I'm sure on Friday, I'm okay. sure on Monday, following Monday, we can decide. That may be the final one. That may be the final one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good address, sir. Cool. Don't tell me you got one PO. You want to eat? Okay. Sure. I need five minutes of lunch. Thanks, Jordan. How are you? I have one PO. I'd like to send Mitch Brooks. Um, he's been with us about three years now. He came from Rochester with some experience. Um, he's been doing extremely well. And I'd like to send him to uh, Roger Williams University in Rhode Island for a week to become a field training officer. As you know, we are going to be getting a couple of new recruits out of the academy. And right now, the department only has myself and Will. Well, I do not have time to train an officer 20 hours a week anymore. And I don't want to burden Will with all that either. So I think this is a good opportunity for Mitch to get more experience. And it's time for him to step up and take more responsibility in the department and become a field training officer. I don't have a problem with that. What's the title of the field? Uh, 2023. And it's broken down for the class, which is 725, hotels for 560.48, and meals for 250. So the total is one thousand five hundred and thirty-five dollars and forty-eight cents. And now come out of professional development. But we take little four-day weekends here and there. For example, uh, Mitch and Will switch their schedules around this week, so Mitch is going to have six days off in a row. So there's ways of doing it, but again, we have to swap the schedules around because we don't have the coverage to actually use the vacation time. So there are ways to get the days off. Unfortunately, we just end up switching the shifts around. Okay. Uh, one leaves Monday for the academy, and the other one starts September first. Yes. So Bryson's last day before Monday was today, and we wish them well and make us proud, and hopefully uh, Monday goes well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is. Uh, we call him New Will because his name is William as well. <laughs> so we have William Hancock and New Will. <laughs> John, how many hours are the proposal for each person? I would say up to eighty. And what does that mean for our budget? What does that mean for our budget? In our line items, because we have those two open salary positions, there's plenty of money in there. I'd have to figure out that with I mean, it's, it's built into the budget because even if we use them all, someone's going to have to cover it, and that's just going to cost overtime. So you're really working a full time for more hours and paying them overtime unless we can do the buyout. Okay. <coughs> nope, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Work. Thank 
got one thing underneath you. We've got a field that we went and also got underneath you a drill management plan, but that's something that we can shop off. I didn't know what's going on. Either. That's a problem. No problem. We can talk about that in another time. Yeah, I think we will. As I told you a few weeks ago, the back of the category, I have, they, they finished trying to get the parts and got it installed. And the PO is PO number 2032 for repairs and diagnostics of the back of due to downshifting or driving down the road. And it was $1,754.59 or 54 cents. Who is the PO for? Chadwick Mayross. Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve PO 203 for $1,784.59. Chadwick, I'll second that. Um, any discussion on the way up? All in favor? Aye. Good.
for Christ City Masonry. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, no, 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 no. Also, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that takes care of all your deals. Um, do you have anything for the transfer station? Do you have anything for the transfer station at all? Do you have anything to bring up for the transfer station? No, we that's good it's, right now. Okay. I do have one thing I want to get to inform you of. I have been in contact with Bob Cassidy and Hanford. I was shooting that was purchased to the... Uh, or Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a two of uh, these for the deep warrant. Is uh, due to be in either the end of next week or the week after. However, not all the incomings will be there, so we'll probably end up cutting a check for separate items, I would think. So okay. Just, 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 just. This question after the fact, is there a maintenance? Is there like a one-hour maintenance on that or a warranty? Is there a, war is there a warranty on that? I hear you. Is there a warranty on that? Is there like a one-year warranty on that? No. What has happened is because of price increase and uh, government vehicle, uh, the discount went down. Continue to get any peace. There is money in the in my uh, yeah, uh, equipment fund yep. that we could purchase the warranty up to a year afterwards for five years. Okay. All right. So we could purchase the warranty separately, or you know, we can work that into in our budget. Um, this year, and we couldn't get the snow plow for it again because keep everything, keep the price where we want it for. But again, we could probably get that out of the equipment. But however, the plow would be used. I mean, we could use a snow sweep, the broom to sweep up to two or three inches. And he said most towns do that versus putting the plow on it. It would be nice to have the plow for other things like push the snow off downtown when we do snow removal. And that's about a twenty-five hundred dollar item, so we can work that into uh, equipment for next year or what have you. Or we already have some money left this year. So you're expecting to deliver that week? He's saying it should be delivered to the to them either the next week or the week after. They're going to put it through service. Good. The broom will be in. It should be shipped with it, and the boat part of it will be here in probably the fourth. The only thing that's delayed on right now is the snowboard. I believe. So that'll be here by November. <laughs> okay, good. Hopefully. So, yeah. We have one public done on front road now. We were pretty often out of doing it till tomorrow where they're talking 90, 95 degrees. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to take a little longer than one day, so we'll do a Monday and Tuesday, so we'll be closing the road again. So, what road? Sorry, I missed the road. What road? All right. Thank you, George. Uh, not right now, thanks. Okay. Good. Carolyn? I guess you want to do a comment or two. Is that a comment or something? Yeah, I'll talk to the Oh, so the proposals. That's, um, I can briefly go through my proposal tonight if you want, or we can do it next week. Um, we'll move next week. Yeah. But um, I just, just want to comment. I did get your email um, about things you're working on. I want to turn over and stuff. And I'm very informed. I appreciate it. Um, so thanks for that. Thank you. 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 Thank so I'm moving on to select board opening. Um, we're not going to make a decision tonight, but it'll. I'm going to cut off date. Cut off date. I would like to say Monday. Um, we could probably decide that. Um, there's been a lot of interest. A lot of people put in. People with experience. People, so I'll just leave it at that for right now. Does it make sense to um, have very brief interviews with the candidates? I can see why not. I can see why not. Maybe we can do that. A ten-minute conversation with each of the candidates, maybe. Maybe. Um, but can we can we plan to cut off the the, the date on Monday and then um, 
can be planned an hour at, at most um, talking to the candidates. Yeah. Because there, there's, there's no, there are no rules about this, so it's just about what you two feel is appropriate, what you're comfortable with, so that you know who the candidates are and, and that you're making the best decision for the town. Okay. But we just have to make sure we notify all the candidates and that it's put in because it's, I think Jim will get today. We should probably cut it off as like tomorrow as the latest instead of them. Okay, so there's a cutoff for tomorrow I, and then on Monday you are doing 10 minute interviews? Is I think that, so, yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah, and then. Well, actually, um, would we want to publicize a cutoff date so people know yeah, that? Yeah, we'll say Friday. Okay. We're going to publicize it. Well, we can even say Saturday. That's fine. Actually, um, let's let's pick a day that gives us a couple days to review all of the letters and information before the Monday meeting. Okay. That's not good. So maybe like Thursday or something? That's it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, today is Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. So Friday gives two days. Well, it gives a day notice because the you know what? I hate to say it, but it's Saturday and then Sunday we'll have to both make sure okay. we do our due diligence. Yep. Okay, so we're going to talk to people. Okay, then we're going to ask everybody to come on Monday for yep. 10 minutes. Yeah, Just and we'll do that. 10 minutes. We'll try to do it first. Yes. Okay. We'll do it later. If we can get maybe from 6 to 7. Sure. We'll do it 7. Sorry, so um, there's stuff going on, Jay. It's actually, so do the interview process from 6 to 7. Yeah, if you can make it. Okay. So we're going to change the meeting date to six. Let's make the time to six. Please. Okay. Now, um, that uh, will be a non-public discussion with the board. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You can't do that in non-public. But we interviewed police officers in non-public because they're employees. Mm -hmm. So unless you think you're risking disparaging somebody's reputation, mm -hmm. but elected officials are not privy to the right to know protections the way employees are. It's not personnel. Okay. I don't mind having the first hour scheduled for right? mm -hmm. sitting down with people. If, 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 sure. if the town wants to come in and see the process of us talking to people, that's fine. From 6 to 7 and the official start of the meeting, we'll be at 7 for select board business. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would suggest that you Let's just notice the meeting for six, and it'll start with that, and then we can conduct regular business after, rather than picking a time, because okay. depending on how long, you don't want dead time. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't also want residents to come in at six, and then feel like they have to sit to right. seven, because I guess they can come in and make that decision. Yeah, right. just like the public hearing tonight. Yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay. So is there a difference between because it's an appointed official versus an employee that is mm -hmm. public versus non-public? Only employees have that right to know protection unless you unless there's a legal matter or if you know you're going to talk about um, a, a, a particular vendor and the, the shoddy workmanship or something, and you don't mm -hmm. want to you know you wouldn't want to disparage them publicly because they're a small business in town or something. It, it, it's it's disparaging a reputation, but if you look specifically at the right to know law, the disparaging of reputation specifically omits members of the board. Um, so and and the provision that protects personnel is specifically around employees. So there is no part of 91A that that protects this process, and and I think part of that is about. Government transparency yeah. so that the voters can see the decision that you're making. So, when we have a potential, um, uh, like police candidate, for example, or any employee, the public is uh, technically entitled to be part of that process. No. But they're not employees yet. But it's an employment process. Okay. Um, that's it's interesting. It is always interesting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And when you have questions like that, you can um, email the Municipal Association. They have a free legal team there that can help you with okay. interpreting these things as situations arise. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so town administrator vacancy and transition now. 
there's no set plan right now for what we're going to do, but we definitely have to. I think we need to have some meetings. We got to we got so, so for those who don't know, I've, I've tendered my resignation effective September 17th. So I did that via email uh, earlier this week just to allow the board four week notice. Um, but September 17th will be my last day. So I've given them a list of current tasks and projects so that we can work together to transition them to other people or create a plan around that and then separately I will um, when I leave provide a final report that's more detailed about bigger picture things and calendar items not to lose track of in the future and things like that. So you don't know Ms. Michelle that right now she has specific questions about that. I know no. we've done the we've done great ops we we've read it so more comfortable with how this prescription was, and we'll leave it at that right now. I think maybe on Monday we can think about a date to have a first meeting okay. next Monday. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, one thing we do get to talk about is ARP funds. Um, we've accepted, have we gone through the years? We have physically, so, so we have affirmed for the state that we will accept the funds. So the, we met the August deadline with that. So now, as far as the town is concerned, there is no urgency. You have until 2024 to tell the state how you're going to spend funds and until 2026 to actually spend the funds. Um, I would still urge the board to start sooner rather than later to talk with the Water Sewer District Commissioners because the amount of money allocated to the town included the fact that the district is included in the town and so there's an obligation in some way to share that money with the district though there is no formula for that so it's at the discretion of the select board while at the same time the primary allowed uses for the funds are water sewer upgrades which are completely district and and stormwater so um, it would make sense to talk to the commissioner sooner rather than later about what they're hoping to what they would like to have funds for and, and right. how much your what other plans you have and how much you think you can afford to the district. I think they were um, they were for somewhere in the same area. Allison Colley sent you an email with a couple of projects right. and, and basic prices outlined. The, the one thing I would remind you of is that the fire station septic system is on the CIP for replacement. You could Put a line out to the fire station to um, hook them up to septic. That would help with your nitrogen permit. It would help with stormwater. It would take that off of CIP, and it would be covered under these funds. Um, a couple of other houses could hook up along the way. But um, as far as the nitrogen permit goes, anything that you can do to extend the sewer line, um, in as much as the district can handle the capacity, um, would qualify for the use of the ARCO funds while at the same time helping the nitrogen permit. It would also help us with figuring out the vehicle wash station, but the timing of that is probably going to be unfortunate. Um, All right. I feel like we could probably table that for this one. We can, but uh, it's something of interest. And I don't see why it couldn't be most of the time. Any, anything, any kind of extension of the water or sewer lines would qualify, or even upgrades of their in, um, existing infrastructure. There's a lot of um, flexibility within those narrow parameters of water, sewer, stormwater. Right. And then um, revised estimate of revenue? Is that? This is not something we have to accomplish tonight, but I, I explained that at the last meeting. Um, it's one of the required reports that we have to submit to the Department of Revenue. Um, it's due September 1st. Um, that's not a hard deadline, except to say the longer you wait, the more it holds up the tax rate. And we want to always try to get the tax rate as quickly as possible because it becomes a cash flow issue. And, it, and we don't want tax bills due around Christmas or the end of the year and pay the tax the following year. So, um, can you send it to us so we can review it in advance of Monday, perhaps? You, you have it in paper at the last meeting, but okay. I think I emailed. I'll, I'll resend it to you. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to 
since it's going to affect budget and you get it off, I guess, push that card on Monday. Anything to do with budget, I'd like to try to put yeah. priority going forward. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm going to, any requests we got through, we already talked about that a little bit about the water senior requests, so we covered that. Um, I'm going to skip policy for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go ahead and board member updates tonight. I really don't have anything to bring up to date right now. I think I'm supposed to meet with Brett tomorrow, but I don't know if they're ready for that. But I'll um, Celia has put forward a posting for 6.30 tomorrow. Okay. This room's occupied until 7 or 7.15, 7 so we'll find another spot somewhere. Okay. Um, and I apologize, Monday I could not make the meeting. I was required not to be here, so I had to cancel it. Just leave it back. Uh, no choice. Um, you got any updates, Um, Nope, nothing. Well, if I would, um, yep. actually got published in the media and the agenda item. Um, well, it doesn't have to be what you know, generally some folks are. So. Yeah. Oh. The no parking? Yes. Yeah. So, so um, it's a select board ordinance. Mm -hmm. So we keep referencing it as highway, but that's confusing no, it's right. because it's... We'll take we'll the... We'll yeah. yeah. So yeah. Either way, whatever we decide on, we'll take it. Okay. It's going to be somebody unhappy. Whatever we're going to All good decisions end up that way. Um, it's been rather calm given that it's summer, but we've got your budget proposals all together. That's most of what we've been working on and getting um, things ready for setting the tax rate. Um, the stormwater annual permit is the next big item on the list. Um, I, I'm going to call a stormwater meeting for next week and hope that George and I will have a chance to prepare for that. It's a page report. I did send it along to you. August um, 31st, is that the date? Yes. So we'll try to get that um, wrapped up and finalized before I go. Okay. Um, that's all I have for now. Um, I'm going to try to attend that on the 31st. Um, and I've also been picking it in. I have been picking it in, not to get in there. I would just caution you about a volunteer that every time a volunteer, you can't hold volunteers accountable and there's a good amount of time in getting up to speed with the technical aspects, but we also need somebody that's going to make sure that we're following through on the calendar items and keeping track of yeah. what we need to do and when we need to do it throughout the yeah, year. Yeah, probably have to call so the common administrator. It's, the common administrator substitute one that that's going to be. Um, I, you know, possibly. It's a substantial amount of time. Um, and, and it requires a certain amount of technical expertise. So it's just something to keep on your radar and not to let that which, fall to just the committee. Which was mostly Paul Castell. Right. We benefited for a very long time with a dedicated, um, responsive volunteer who really um, managed a lot of that for us. So that was a huge loss. Okay. No, no, thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other business from the board? From the board? I think we need to nominate a chair, or should we wait until we fill? You've got a vice chair, and then I would say you, you would all again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um, one other thing, mm -hmm. um, we probably can wait to, to kind of think about the ex officio positions that were being created um, as part of that. It's on the list. Okay. All right. Is there any community input from anybody? Community input. Okay. Um, I just have a question, Carrie Boyle, um, 150 Permit Road. Um, so with the presentations tonight um, with, um, with the town clerk, fire, um, I think those were the only two. Um, is there, this is just a question about the process. So they present that and then you guys are going to go through that or because I guess I'm just wondering like I I had a question about something but I'm not sure if this is the the time to ask it or is there another meeting like will this come up again where I should ask does that make sense I, I think it depends on what your question is well, but, the, but the other half like all, all the other budget presentations that haven't happened tonight are yeah. scheduled for Monday next week 
the select board has a compiled budget spreadsheet yeah. of all the pro, um, all of the budget proposals, and after they've heard from all the department heads, then they will deliberate amongst themselves to decide what to do with those proposals to present to the budget committee. Okay, so that deliberation is not in public. So oh, it absolutely mm -hmm. isn't. Oh, oh, it is. It oh, is. Everything is but, public unless it's not. But at that, but at that point. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> um, that, that, that's actually like quoting yeah. you know one of the municipal attorneys because and the reason they say that is because the default should be of course it's public mm -hmm. okay. and then only under a very few circumstances is it not so always assume things are public okay so I guess my my thing is uh, I want I I had a thought on something but I guess I I'm wondering if I should just it could be like, a, you know, maybe I don't even have to voice this because when they are going through the deliberations, like, is there at, at that point where that they're deliberating that people can comment, like make final comments on what they're deliberating on? Comments. Typically or is this the section? Typically those are done in budget workshops mm -hmm. where, you know, you probably have opportunity for public comment before and after. Okay. But I would suggest that if you heard something tonight that you want to comment on, okay. it's always appropriate to comment. So you okay. can email the board, you can, you know, email the board and copy the fire chief or, you know, and you can always reach out directly to department heads or myself and, and ask a question. I'm not sure okay. what they were talking about when they referenced whatever it was just so that you better understand. But but by all means that could influence their deliberations. And that's so at any time you're always welcome to comment. So it can so I uh, so I can I can email you guys with with the with These the are your elected officials okay. representing you. All right. Well um yeah I think I just want to hold off and think of but if like get my thoughts. If like I'll just give for example if if uh, you know Tom like say if Dan was to present tonight, yeah. and he was to present some of his budget. When he's done presenting his budget, if you had a specific question, like hey, why, you're, you're welcome to ask a question for me too. It's not like you can't. Right? Well, I think, I think it's important because when the select board, um, you know, we as the select board kind of go over the budget and um, decide if it's the budget we want to bring forward, we want to have that input. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say my the two things. So sorry, guys. <laughs> um, one, um, I wanted to ask this when Dan was here because I don't. But I I think he said you might have worked with some of this on it with him. Um, he mentioned the money for the ballot clerk um, for elections, and I just wanted I just had a question on that because I know that. Um, Charlie and in the past have they referred to me as the role that I'm doing with the check-in is the ballot clerk um, and I just wanted to clarify that because is that more for super the supervisors of the checklist and the volunteers because I don't um, I don't take and I, I never take any money payment for um, working at the elections that's from you know seven to whatever, no matter how many elections a year, I don't take payment. So I just, just because it was referred to as ballot clerk, and I know that others refer to me as that. I just want people to think that I'm no, it's a good question. taking so money. Sure the, that's the that. name of the line, but it really refers to anybody who works an election. That is to say, not the town clerk, moderator, or select board members, okay. but people who work in the election function otherwise okay. um, can submit for um, a half day or full day stipend so okay. lots of people don't take the stipend you know there are lines that are consistently unspent for fifty dollars because that's how those people are so okay thank you for that service I just, but it does cover other it, people it, 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 well i didn't it wasn't like i wasn't looking for a thank you that's not what it is it's just but i know like when when the um inspector comes in from the the state you know the state attorney's office to do the inspection when we're at the election i'm referred to as the ballot clerk 
um, and because that's the, the check-in part. Um, so I just didn't want it to be like as it goes down. If people refer to me as that, not realizing it's all of the all of the volunteers there, because um, I don't want people. And I don't think there way. are any rules about okay. who is or who isn't okay. a valid clerk <laughs> on that day. You okay. know, it's obviously not the moderator or the select yeah. board, the town clerk, but otherwise, we don't have any rules of who exactly gets paid. Yeah. Um, it's people who submit who work, but they're you know. Well, kind of, yeah. and, and, and that was just, it's a wording thing because like the supervisors are referred to as the supervisors of the checklist and, and so forth. I just didn't want that. I didn't, I guess, didn't want people out in the public to think that I'm like, you know, I don't know, making, I don't know, making money off the elections. But um, secondly, and I know that probably sounds silly, no. secondly, no. Um, I just, I missed the first part when Dan was talking. He was talking about um, the hours it takes to do that job and um, his experience. So I'm assuming there there was a pay increase with that. I missed that part because I was coming he, in. Um, he calculated a pay increase on his proposed budget to reflect rather than what, you know, the calculation of the existing stipend is 20 hours a week at $20 an hour is what he said, but that this would be $22 an hour for 25 hours a week. Okay. Does, um, I guess the thing that I would like the board to consider is um, I'm not sure where he was brought in at with the pay for the stipend. It's whether set by town meeting, so it doesn't so matter it who's, the in, the position, it's who's always in the position. Who's in the position, okay. So I guess knowing knowing that that he was he came in at the same level as our previous town clerk um, who had 30 years of experience in that in doing that that type of role um, and he was not he is still there's a learning curve for him um, the previous town uh, the previous town clerk always worked extra hours that was part of the thing you know and she could set the hours that she worked but she worked a lot more that and she didn't get paid for those so I just I think it's part of the job I know I know that she had to um, basically and I was on the budget committee when when this was happening too but she was having to um, kind of beg for additional money so um, I have a concern about, and this is nothing personal about Dan. I think he's a very nice guy, and I think he's been just he's been put into a very difficult job, and it was under a difficult situation um, with the pandemic. But um, he's really only been in the job since November, um, and I just I just think that giving an increase to someone who is not fully trained on that job um, at this time, I, I just don't think it's right. So, it's my opinion, sorry. Thank you. Sorry for rambling. Is there any other community? I just want to say I'm going to be sorry to see you go. <laughs> when I was a select board, you were like, oh, if, when the select board rotates, it's, you know, I'll keep the info so it doesn't get lost, and now you're leaving it, so now it's going to be lost. <laughs> so I hope the transition goes smoothly, and thank you for giving us a month. I really appreciate that. But you yeah, will be missed. The month will, will help. Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry. Carrie Boyle again. And I just think also to add on to that, I think that maybe, and maybe it's too late in the budget, Cycle, but I think we need to, the town needs to really start looking at having someone maybe using that money where someone's asking for a raise, but we need to be looking at having a deputy town clerk. Um, and if that means paying someone more money to do that, I, I think that would benefit the residents of Rollinsford to have someone who is fully trained, and it does have to be a Rollinsford resident. Uh, but someone who is fully trained, 
So if the town clerk is not here, um, there's, you know, the, the office is open for business. So another thing to think about. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody online have any public input? So the last thing I have to bed. Is, uh, Yep. Can we table that? You want to table that? Yeah. It's, it's safe. All right. So um, if there's nothing else, I was going to make a motion to adjourn. One, just one. Okay. Um, can we work with you this week to kind of um, slim the agenda for next week down, especially with budget presentations? Yeah. That's? Yeah. Okay. Whatever you okay. Priorities, we'll yeah. Just, we'll talk to the panel and just kind of agree on maybe what the thing is. Like, you both have editing power. Yeah. Okay. Let's oh, do that. Okay. We'll, Sounds we'll, good. We'll decide what we what's most important because we don't want to have a, you know, not that we don't have time, we don't want to be a tentarium on Monday night. Right, right. Agreed. All right. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. On this. Aye. Aye. Aye.